you you feel like you have nothing right now like this is your last god literally has like brought you to this video <music> I'm so sorry, I'm gonna spit out my gum. <laughs> I kind of want to spit mine out too. Yeah. Like, oh, wait, 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 everybody just go. Yeah, this is better than swallow it. This is, this is so funny. Wait, you swallow I'm so your glad gum? We no, I took it out already. I'm so glad we clapped. I'm not trying to go like that. <laughs> I'm so you glad. Know, you we better clapped. swallow it? No, no, I took it out, put it in the wrapper. Oh, yeah. no, wait, wait. Can I be like totally like nasty and put mine in your wrapper too? Yeah, can I put mine in your So yeah. nasty. <laughs> you know she's a German pole, right? But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad, I'm so glad we clapped. You're like, I'll just do this, and then, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my. Okay. All right. All right. Wow. I love Kyrenus because it actually shows us that we have to be like dependent on the Lord. Yeah, he for real. The world, but he can. Yeah, this Come true. on now. This is more of a dependency on God. So you this, bro. That was I got it. Wow, no, you put was, the mic closer. Really say that again. That was, that was, that <laughs> was, that was really great. great. The way that you said like we can't save the world, like, that was hilarious. Honestly, <laughs> honestly. Like watching that. Like save the tree. Oh my God. I'm real. I'm getting tired. Like the the random thoughts are coming out. But here we go. You got all I have to say. You got this. Like I got you're, this. You're gonna crush it. Go. You're gonna crush it. All right. Yo, what is up? Listen, today we are going to be talking about identity. Uh oh, that is a big thing in this generation, and what we're all kind of wrestling through is identity. So before we get into that, I, want, I got some guests over here. First of all, my beautiful wife. What up, girl? <laughs> are we are we co-hosting? Are you like? <laughs> are we co-hosting? She just asked me, "Are we co-hosting, girl? We are one." I'm your wife. <laughs> one I, I, I belong. I belong to you. Come on, you, you belong to me. I belong to you. Yeah. Come on. Now. But I'm not a guest though, so let's let's introduce our real guest that we got here at the. All home. right, I think we should keep all this. All right, we'll keep it. Let's keep all this. <laughs> we should we, honestly. We should we should we should keep all this. All right, cool. So who so who we got? Who we got beside it's you? It's giving authenticity. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> come, on, come on now. Real, raw, authentic. Uh, my name is Hannah. What's up? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. A few moments later. My name is Matthew. <laughs> I'm Mark. Now that we've gotten all the Bible names out of the way. Where's Luke? Let's... <laughs> <laughs> where's Brother Judas? Wow. He's outside. Wait. Judas, we're in the Bible Belt, y'all. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, now that we've gotten all the introductions out of the way, um, in all seriousness, guys, we were just praying off camera and just really, really feel uh, that today as we're recording that there's some of you out there right now that are on the brink of you you feel like you have nothing right now like this is your last god literally has like brought you to this video mm. and he's screaming out to you come to me and you're probably weary you need rest you're probably dealing with suicide even right now you probably have a pill bottle in your hands i mean i that's part of my story i dealt with taking pills and i i really believe that your deliverance is going to happen today. Mm. Mm. Your on. deliverance is going to happen yes. today wow. as yes. you're watching this. And so, I mean, even if something is like identity, I mean, I know a lot of you, we got some powerhouses here, guys. And I, I just want to ask you guys, how important is identity in the believer's life? How important is it? You want me to go first? Yeah, well, you go ahead. <laughs> jump, jump in. I think it's like it's extremely important. I think that like everybody places their identity in something, and that's like who you believe that you are, like what you like, yeah, who, how you function. And so I think that it's so important that we. Well, I could go into like a whole thing right now. I'm like, how <laughs> how far do you want me to go with this? Because like I think about how Jesus is our creator That's it. and he has given us a creative design and function. He has given this, given us this instruction manual yeah. to life and said, this is how I want you to live this life and yeah. live it out and live it right. Yeah. And this is how I've created you. And if wow. you, you know, I, I just see so many young people in this generation, they try to place their identity in so many different things other yeah. than the word of God. Wow. And it leads them down a path to destruction because any other path than Jesus produces death and not life. He's the mm -hmm. only path that produces life. And so what you place your identity in 
a thousand, a million, a bajillion yeah. times matters. And so, yeah. yeah. I would say it's extremely important. Man, that's extremely so good. important. That's so good. Cool. I feel like Mark has cool. something. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. Let's go, Mark. You know, there's so much this world pushes on people an agenda, social media. Yeah. You're driving in the highway, you've got billboards pushing identity, pushing who wow. you are, pushing sh what you should eat, wow. pushing what you should do. And it's just it's become a normal thing. Mm. And it, it it's so normal to find who we are and what what we are from the world. Mm -hmm. but God wants his people to find who they truly are because the world didn't create you. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The billboards did not create you. Right. Instagram did not create you. Jesus did. And, and Jesus knows what he created you for, mm -hmm. how he created you, and, and the different plans he's got for you, That's you it. know, the great plans That's he's it. got for you, a purpose for you, a future. Life is found in Jesus. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Not in billboards, not in Instagram, not in Facebook, right. not, not in anything that the outside visible things uh, are showing you. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. You were talking about something, even off camera, about like comparison. And do you, do you think that like comparison kills identity? Wow, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> he like asked a question but made a statement. <laughs> comparison kills identity. Do you yeah, think oh, yeah. Go ahead. I think comparison does kill identity because we we do not have the power to identify ourselves because we did not create ourselves. Mm. You know, we our identity is rooted in God, and I think when we try to compare ourselves to other people. Even even people who aren't followers of Jesus, wow. you know, the comparison is a hu huge issue in our day in culture. Yeah, especially with social media. Especially with social media. I want to be like this person. No, they're better than me. They look better than me. They dress yeah. better than me. It's like, no, you need to you need to know who you are in him. Uh, so I would say, man, if you are struggling with comparison, cling to the Lord yeah. and yeah. and say yes to him, because yeah. then you will be adopted in the family of God. And then you gain all his rights and privileges. Wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think, man, people are struggling with comparison. Shift your focus and really just run after God. Because the way you see will change. The way you think, the way you love, the way you walk will be different. Yeah, 100%. I think I want to um, add another C to this. Okay. But comparison kills identity. But I think confusion also mm. kills identity. And I think that that's a huge issue in our culture today is like, there is so much confusion. It's like, wait, now there's all of a sudden 90 genders on paper, but mm. I thought there was only two, male and female. I want to go there. Go there. I, uh -oh. I really want to go there. I really want to go there because I, God is not the author of confusion. Yeah. And so what would you guys say in regards to the confusion happening right now in our day? Because I just, I can't imagine your, it's just, it's insane to me. I honestly call it, parental abuse if parents are allowing 12 year olds to be able to change their sex mm. because one minute they feel like they're maybe a little more feminine or they feel like they're a girl like the the brain is not even fully developed yes. at that age and so i it, it it honestly produces a righteous anger in me and i i do have a justice heart but i'm like how in the world do we overcome that right now and what what would you guys say even to a generation that is living in a time right now oh, yeah. where confusion is like it's it's everywhere. TikTok yeah. is telling yeah. you, I mean, TikTok is telling you, well, if you feel this way, then you probably are a girl and you should yeah. literally like cut your whole body parts because that's what you feel. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, what would you guys what would you guys say there? I think that the enemy has attacked family in the previous generation. Right. He's attacked fathers. Fathers speak identity over their kids. Man. So if the kids, right, if, if, if he gets the fathers, he gets the children, he confuses their identity, then they don't know who they are. Right. If they don't know who they are, they don't know what they could do. Mm. Then he gets their purpose. Right. So this is the attack of the devil to confuse identity. We've got it in, in the body of Christ. It's not just in the world. Yeah. Like we're doing youth camps and we youth conferences. We're seeing some of these kids. They come up to us, ask for prayer. They don't know if they're a boy or a girl. They're confused in their identity. If you don't know if you're a boy or a girl, how are you gonna know that God can use you? How do you? How are you gonna know if God can can speak to you if you're you're so confused in, in yourself? How can you believe in a God who you don't see? Mm. 
Avengers. Yeah, and we were talking earlier about how, like, the enemy is starting to, to demonize this generation through social media apps, even, like, TikTok. Mm -hmm. We went out yesterday, and we were talking to some young people out in public, just filming a video, <laughs> and young people were literally telling us that they were pro-choice, you know, pro-murder, pro-abortion, oh because they literally have gotten their views off of TikTok, like, their wow. beliefs wow. off of TikTok wow. and social media. I'm like, have you done any research? They're like, oh, I've been on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. And so like, I, I see like the LGBTQ community all over TikTok as well. You know, we were talking about witches are on TikTok yeah. now doing tarot card readings yeah. and live streams. Yeah. But even even with the gender confusion, it's all over TikTok. There's influencers yeah. and they're trying to infuse that into a generation. I really do think it goes back to family as well. Like, mm -hmm. And back to what I was saying earlier, like if this generation does not get discipled and yeah. how they were created to live, then what like who decides like who they are their right. their mind is going to come up with things the enemy's oh, going to yeah. speak lies totally. to them right. and so you cannot discern lies from truth if you don't even know the truth Ooh. and yeah. so like jesus was in the wilderness and he was tempted with these things from the enemy what did he do he quoted scripture yeah. and so, so we weird. we live in a generation where we have lacked discipleship so much going outside of the four walls of the church mm -hmm. And so I think if this, if the church will actually start going outside of the four walls again, yeah. and I'm so thankful for YouTube channels like Caleb and Claudia's Aww. where they're going outside of the four walls and reaching this generation online, like mm. we need stuff like this where there's solid biblical truth, yeah. not watered down, yeah. being preached to this generation, discipleship, yeah. so you can know just like Jesus in the wilderness with the enemy, quote scripture back at the enemy, know what the word of God says so you can, you know come against that stuff when it starts to when the enemy starts to speak to you you'd be like no that's not truth this yeah. is what the, yeah, my, this is what the on. bible says yeah. this is what my god says about me and who he created me to be it, the bible says god created us in his image that's it mm -hmm. so that's it. when you find god you will then find who you are and what you're created for yes that's it so if he that's takes so you from god he <laughs> takes you from identity mm -hmm. I like, I like this. People say this intimacy into me. You see mm -hmm. when you see God and you see into him, you'll see who you are and you'll find yeah. your identity. Wow. Wow. Oh, and, and, and sexuality is not determined by what we feel or what somebody, you know, tells us who we should be. You, we don't get our identity from watching TikTok videos or, right. you know, on social media because right. somebody told us we should be this way. And I think that's why it's so important to understand the gospel because the gospel would change your identity. Yeah. And when the gospel changes your identity, it should also begin to change your activity. Mm. Everything oh, that you word. do. And so, uh, you know, and, and people don't want to hear that. They get yeah. offended. It's like, no, wow. we have to stand on the truth. That's it. You know, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but it's the word of God yeah. that stands forever. That's it. And That's we it. get our truth from that right yeah, there. So good. He says, is my word like, not like a hammer that will smash a rock to pieces? We got to speak the truth in love, of course. But I think also it's a major problem when sin doesn't offend us, but correction does. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's and so true. we need to be That's corrected. True. We need to be realigned. We need to come back to you know, the basics and what the word of God says, because it's in there yeah. that we find truth in, in our identity and everything in, in who God says we are, man. you know? So we've got to, man, we got to lay down how we feel. We got to die to what we feel, what we think to man. what we want. And we need to say yes to the, to the ways of God, man. Oh, so, so what you're saying is that sonship is not based on feelings is actually based on your position from the cross. Exactly. Come on, I know you got to fire shit up in your bones, girl. Come on, now. Come on, now. <laughs> no, I want to I wanna talk about sonship a little bit. I feel like the answer to a generation is encounter. It's people encountering yep. the love of God mm. that says you're a son, you're a daughter, mm. and you're defined by the Father's love. And so That's I want to talk about sonship a little bit because I think that maybe people that are struggling with, with identity issues I think that their questions would change once they see the son of man oh, and once yeah, they encounter so encounter him in a new so way. Good. I think their questions would change. And so how would you define sonship for somebody who's never even heard that term before? Mm. What does sonship mean? And even maybe people that are listening that maybe didn't have a father in their oh, life. So good. And so they can't see their they can't see their heavenly father rightly because maybe their father was absent or was abusive or whatever the case may be. But I do think that that, that really plays a role in our identity, yeah. how we see ourselves by the way that we were parented or fathered mm. um, more than we realize. It takes really deep roots, but then it also does affect the way that we view the world and how we view oh. 
God and then how we view ourselves. Yeah. I would love to hear from you guys. Like, what is sonship? How would you define that? And the power of sonship is so important. Yes. Uh, because you're adopted into the family of God. That's it. You know, and I think that adoption is purely an act of the grace of God. Mm. But your adoption can only happen based on your belief in Jesus. There's a lot of different aspects of of our identity when we uh, say yes to him, the power of sonship. You know, we, we were once not a people. Now we are a people of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. our status changes. Yeah. We were once a slave to sin. Yes. You know, now we're a child of God. Yeah. You know, our position changes. Once you stood guilty before God. Yeah. Now you stand as a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. And when he looks at you, he sees Jesus. He sees the cross and the price that he paid, you know, and, uh, and our relationship changes. Man. You know, we can have an intimate relationship with our Father in heaven. So, man, there's just so many aspects of our identity that changes when we say yes to Him wow. and understand sonship. What has really helped me when it comes to being a daughter of God and, like, knowing who I am in Christ? Well, mm. one is my parents really discipling me growing up. And, wow. again, back to the family thing again. Like, I think it's so important that we get back to families pouring into their kids again mm. because they know— Oh, my earthly father and my mom, they like raised me and discipled me this way. Like, and it helps them to understand more of the love of the father. Yeah. And thankfully, like if you don't have a father, like an earthly father that has treated you correctly or has maybe caused wounds in your life, like you can have this sonship and, yeah, and knowing so that you are a son or daughter in Jesus. And yeah. what's, I think I've already said this, but what's really helped me is so Romans chapter eight, like mm. guys, I've been living in Romans chapter eight for a yeah. while. And I think it's so cool how it says in Romans chapter eight, verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, mm. the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. I love that because yeah, like when you, it. when you're in Christ, like, you know who you are, you know, your identity, you know, I'm a son and a daughter. Even if again, you've grown out up with a earthly father or an earthly mother who treated you wrongly or maybe abused you. Like you can know, okay, they're not perfect, but Jesus is perfect and we have to forgive them. Let them go release them. Okay. Yeah. And, and know that we can have no condemnation in Christ and know that we can have this this knowing and this belonging and this this love relationship in Jesus where he can free you of this fear that this fear that you're going to fall back into into bondage or this fear of your earthly father or mother but you you can know this is who I am in Christ and there is no fear in love oh, come on so mm. i actually grew up without a father my mm. father died when i was young mm. wow and so god became my father the wow. bible says call no one your father you only have one father it's your father in heaven mm. he's the best father your father on earth will never give you stones or snakes to eat, right? If you ask him for something. Yet alone, even your father on earth is not perfect, but God is. And how much more would God give you? You know, and God yeah, wants so to good. father a generation. Yes. He yes. wants to reveal yeah. not just himself as a Lord, as a king, but as a father. Mm. Something happens when God becomes a father to you and speaks identity over you speaks who you are, what your purpose is, what your destiny is. Mm. And so even the enemy's tactic is to take people away from God, take them away from spending time with their creator, their act, their real father, really. Yeah. He yeah. knew us before we were in our mother's womb. That's right. Mm. He thought of us. Right. He already had a plan for us before we were even born. Yeah. And he wants to speak identity over us. He wants to yeah. speak mm. that destiny over us. And and where where can you find that? How can you find that in the Word of God? Right. Yeah. The world right. longs for revealing of sons of God, That's it. Uh, sons That's and it. daughters. Yeah. It longs. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come yeah. on, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Come on. It longs for revealing of not orphans. Listen, yeah. orphans have a father too. They just don't know him. Oh, wow. You, wow. Can, you, you can, everyone's got a father. God wants sons to be revealed. There's yeah. something that happens. There was a curse on creation and the whole world, all of creation longs for revealing of the sons. Sons are those who know their father and have a relationship with him. Mm. Then you can bring that re revelation of the father to this world. Wow. Listen, we don't, we don't just want to talk about how people don't have identity, don't know their father, right. don't have sonship. We want to talk about how the world longs for a revealing of the sons, yeah. how God wants not just to give you a, re a revelation of himself, but God wants 
you to bring the revelation of who God is to the world. Mm. Man, dude, so that good. that is so good. And I'm think when you read Romans uh, eight fifteen, what's highlighted to me is that by whom we cry out, and that mm. cry to me screams desperation. Mm. So what are you gonna fill that desperation with? Wow. Is it what the world says about you yeah. or beloved identity? Mm-hmm. We have got, we we are all desperate, but what are we going to fill the desperation yeah, with? So yeah, good. it's yeah. beloved identity. Yes, that's man. it. That's it. Man. Yeah, it's the love of God. It's 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 encountering the love of God that changes everything, and it's so simple. It's the simple gospel, though. It's man. the simple gospel that I feel like will set a generation free. That's like okay, I'm going to replace the lies of the enemy. No matter how, what, however long that that lie has just taken root and created bondage, like what the word talks about, like Mm -hmm. bondage. But I feel like that's, but that's what the love of God does. The gospel sets people free from the bondage, the bondage of the lie that the enemy tries to feed and feed and feed. And you were talking about this, babe, and I really want you to bring this up, but we were talking about how like, you know, Generation Z is like they're on video games and TikTok mm-hmm. for like mm-hmm. 10, 14 hours yeah. a day. Mm-hmm. And so what you feed your soul and your spirit with is is very easily what you will define yourself mm. by. So a whole generation that is on TikTok and video games for hours and hours and hours a day, mm-hmm. but they're disinterested in the things of God. And what did you say, babe? People talk about yeah. how, oh man, Gen Z, they just have an attention span deficiency. No, I just said they have they have an appetite deficiency. It's their it's their appetite. The deficiency and the attention span is all different things, but they can sit on video games for five hours. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't sit, sit in the things of the Lord. You can't sit in the, you, you fall asleep in a, in a service. Mm-hmm. You've literally spoiled, I, I said it before, you've spoiled yourself. And so what happens when you're mm-hmm. playing video games of uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto? I don't know if they still play that right now or anything like that. What happens? It's it's guns, it's violence. And now all the vi- all those different things are flooding your mind. And now all you can think about all you can, all you put your identity in is death, mm. and so you, you're literally because sitting. Because it's what your feet, your yeah, it's what you're feeding your eyes, yourself. yeah, your ears, your yeah, your heart. And so, with. and so, your app. If we can have a generation, if you're watching this right now or listening to this. I'm telling you, God wants to fulfill that appetite. We're, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's the appetite of the, of the soul. So the soul is like, you know, Ryan says, it's like a hungry hippo. And so whatever you give your soul, it's going to eat, whether good or bad. And God wants to fill your soul with beloved identity, yeah. with his love. We're, we're three parts, body, soul, spirit. And a lot of us, we, we eat, we eat, we eat a lot of bad stuff for us. And so we spoil our appetite. God wants to fill your appetite with his love. I've even sat and watched Netflix shows and stuff like that and go, you know, and binge watch. I remember like a couple years ago, I was been watching Netflix shows. I'm like, dude, what am I, what am I doing? And I'm filling my appetite with bad stuff. Wow. And so I have the attention span to sit through things. I was just sitting through bad things. Why can I sit and why can I sit in prayer? Why can I sit yeah. and read my Bible mm-hmm. and 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 read about beloved identity? It's because I filled my mind and my appetite with bad stuff. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord's gonna renew your appetite. Yeah. The Lord's yeah. gonna renew your appetite. Yeah. And that's why you see so much shootouts, school 100%. shootings, you yeah. see all this yeah. crazy stuff happening. Yeah. It's what they're feeding themselves. That's it. They're playing, yeah. like you said, playing the video games. Yeah. And nothing wrong with that. I have yeah. an Xbox, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I uh, I like to bring the boys over. We yeah. play Call of Duty together sometimes. Yeah. But if you're sitting there playing it all day, mm-hmm. all 24-7, mm-hmm. and yeah. you're not filling yourself up with God, and you're finding identity in that, it's it's, it. it's cultivating yeah. inside it. of you. And it's right. it's really building up to, to then come out. And what's That's coming it. out is what we're seeing. Not Man. just that, but well, yeah. social media and every everything else. Uh, yeah. Movies, you watch yeah. movies nonstop, and yeah. then you're finding identity through through the movies you're watching, Man. like all the spiritual witchcraft movies coming yep, out yep, right now, yep. and now so such a rise in witchcraft like never before. Yeah. That's it's it. it's That's become it. normal, That's it. That's it. you know, yeah. uh, because the enemy and the enemy strategic. You know, if you're not looking into his book, you're looking into, into some other book. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like what you guys are all talking about, that's why I think it's so important that this generation is gripped and marked for eternity. Like if we mm. can realize that, like, I love the Francis Chan illustration where he talks about how like our, we're born here mm, yep. and then we die here and then eternity literally goes on forever. If you can just imagine like this imaginary line yeah. from death to like forever. Yeah. yeah. And so like we need a generation who's marked with just the face of Jesus Man. and gripped for eternity knowing that. At the end of our life, you're not going to wish 
that you spent more time playing video games and getting yeah. your identity wow. from video games. You're not going to wish that you spent more time on social media and getting your identity from social media or whatever it is. All these worldly things or any sinful thing. You're going to wish at the end of your life that you spent more time with Jesus, mm. that you spent yeah, more time so. thinking about eternity and his word and prayer yeah. and the Holy yeah. Spirit and doing the things of God and fulfilling the yeah. great commission and all of these things. Like yeah. we're going to wish that we were with Jesus a thousand times where I know at the end of my life, I'm going to look back and say, man, all those moments I could have been with the Lord, like in, instead of doing other things or on social yeah. media or right. whatever. And I remember like in, mm-hmm. um, and I talk about this all the time, but I just think about, you know, open doors to the enemy. And when I was in high school, I was a Christian, you know, but all my Christian friends are watching this show. It's called 13 Reasons Why. Mm. And they're all like, oh, it's not bad, you know, whatever. And, and these are Christian friends, supposedly. Mm. And like, they're all encouraging me saying it's not bad to watch the show. So at this point, I had never had thoughts of suicide or depression, like hit my mind. And I started watching that show started binge watching wow. it and all of a sudden these thoughts of like suicide yep. and depression wow like thankfully it never got too bad but it started to come in and i have grown up in a healthy home and so i've never had those thoughts before wow. and i'm like wow, wow this is so wow. crazy wow and i asked the lord i was like what's going on he's like you need to repent of watching this show mm-hmm. and i repented of the show so we're watching the show stopped watching it shut it down deleted netflix all the things and literally immediately all those thoughts left whoa no more thoughts of depression no more thoughts of suicide it's a spirit Mm -hmm. wow and so i feel like this generation because of what you idolize is what the door is going to be open to and so if you are idolizing social media or whatever the door is open to the enemy and he doesn't care what he brings in with him he doesn't care if he brings depression or suicide or anxious thoughts or whatever else or homosexuality or or gender confusion Fusion yeah. or whatever gender yeah. dysphoria he doesn't care yeah. and so i think we need to be gripped with the face of jesus again and know that's our creator the one who created you he's gonna know how you function the best yeah. just like so like good. i'm just trying thinking like uh actually mark this is your book so like the person who created this book cover right and in, in this book they know how this is created to function mm. you're, you're it's you know you read a book right, right. Yeah. but if you start to use this as a spoon to try to eat your cereal is that gonna work the best mm. no because that was not its created design and function and so wow. we need to get back to the word of god again and knowing this is our creator this is who created us he knows how we function the best and so when we try to function outside of our created design and function you're not gonna be functioning very well Ooh. so anyways Free wow. Channa. So good. Free Channa. I believe, you know, we're living in a time where we're ups- we have we're obsessed with identity politics. Mm. We've forgotten who we are. And there's <laughs> oh people out there who's saying, Well, Matt, what if I was born a male but I feel like a female? Mm. Well that my friend is not God making a mistake. It's the devil trying to confuse a young mind. Mm. Yes. And so yes. what you yes. need is you need an encounter with the love of God. And I love, Claudia, that you're you're hitting that hard because, as we were saying earlier, it's the love of God that brings us to Jesus, and it's the fear of God that keeps us in Jesus. Oh, we man. need the fear of God back That's in it. the church because wow. we That's live it. in a time, and I feel like it. it's been said, the American church, we've been taught to feel God instead of fear God. Mm. And we need the fear of the Lord. It's the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. That's it. And wisdom is knowing who you are in Him. And I just want to say... Uh, the reason why the enemy is attacking sexuality and, and, and attacking these areas, especially in the young generation, is because if you follow this alphabet community, yeah. what you have is a society that no longer produces humanity. Mm. And if everybody in the planet embraces this community, then nobody would procreate or recreate. Exactly. And then yep. the devil, exactly. Satan himself, yeah. will actually you know, be in control. You know, yeah. It'll be all about because we're no longer procre- uh, procreating, recreating, that's it. That's it. and uh, and that's that's not how God intended things uh, for things to be. So, man, if you love the people in the house, you're not going to let them burn down while the house is burning. That's you're going right. to tell them to get so out, that's and that's right. why we're we're sitting here today and we're having man. conversations like this because we're letting somebody know. I'd rather uh, offend you now yeah. than see you than see you get offended later. Come on, in now. eternity. Yeah, you know we would rather offend you into heaven yeah. than oh. flatter you into hell. Come on, somebody. Yes. So we're we're here to let you know <laughs> there's a call on your life. There's That's a it. purpose for your life. You were created by God and for God. And until you understand that, life will never make sense. And you'll constantly try to fill this void with everything other yeah. than him. Man. You were made by purpose, mm-hmm. for purpose. Man, and I'm telling you today, you've got to know that. You've got to grasp this truth. 
and, and let it sit and marinate in your spirit and let God change you from the inside out. You know, the Bible says that God's a jealous God and he's mm. jealous for you. Mm. That's why anything and everything you try of this world will never satisfy you. That's right. It will never, it, it might be nice to drive a jet ski for five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe even a couple hours. But, it, you know, if you drive a jet ski a whole day, you're done. Yep. It, it, you're empty once again. You get a, you know, you want a nice house, you get a nice house. It's, it's satisfying for a little bit, but then you want more. But there's only one thing that will satisfy you. And God did that so that only he can satisfy you. Nothing, nothing can eternally satisfy you but Jesus. I think that this generation is looking for answers. Yeah. And I was watching recently, and I literally cried through it, but I was recently watching a Candace Owens interview that she did with a transgender and asked like really real questions. And the trans woman was really transparent on the regret and how the surgeries, it actually caused more problems, both physically, emotionally. I mean, she became more suicidal or he, she became more suicidal um, and has long lasting physical effects because of that. And it just, it broke my heart because that person can never go back. Um, that, that person can never go back. Yeah. And so I think somebody like them, they were looking for answers, but I, I was filled with so much compassion. And that's the thing is, is I think even with the LGBTQ community, a lot of this, a lot of the cry is, well, love is love. Yeah. If Christians really loved, then they would just let us marry who we want to marry mm. and change our body parts when we want to change our body parts. The thing about the gospel truth mm. is that it says, come as you are, but don't stay as you are. Amen. We live in a generation that gets so offended with truth. And it's not that Jesus is saying, you know, hey, I'm going to beat you at the head. And this is no, mm. it's the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. Yes. And sometimes kindness looks like I'm going to tell you the truth. Mm. And you, yeah, you're looking for answers, but the surgery is not the answer yeah. it. that That's that it. getting married to a girl that even even in heteros heterosexuality, like mm. it's not even just homosexuality, even in heterosexuality. I love my husband, yeah. but my husband does not have all the answers That's to right. my eternal soul. Mm. Like I can't put my identity in Caleb. Yeah, he so because good. he was not even though he can love me, he loves me like Christ. But it's Christ that's the standard yeah, of love. Yeah, so and great. so, yes, like marriage is an awesome representation. But even um, even in biblical marriage yeah. between a man and a woman, Caleb mm. is still not made to fill those holes. My, and if I put him at that standard where my husband is supposed to fill every void when he doesn't measure up and he makes mistakes, yeah. which he will because he's a human being, yeah. then I will, again, put my identity in that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't put my identity in humanity trying to fill that right. void. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. that's so good. I, I can boil it down to this, which I feel like we're all we're camped out in Romans 8. God is looking for a generation that is going to be persuaded. Romans 8.38, for I am persuaded that neither death mm, nor life, come on. nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. You're watching this right now, and there are things that are separating you from the love of God. You wow. feel like it. But what God's word says is that he's looking for you to be persuaded that none of those things can separate you from the love of God. And so even right now, as we're, we've been talking about this identity, we've been talking about the love of God. I believe that you're going to have a fresh baptism, as we say, Come on. of the love of God yes. and so that good. you will truly be persuaded that nothing My God. can separate you from the love of God. Yeah. Nothing, not that suicidal thought, no. not that pill bottle, not that relationship, mm. nothing can separate you from the love of God. Mm. And I believe right now God is actually calling you, yeah. calling you to the love of God. It starts with that. And the love of God, like we were talking about, will lead you to the fear of the Lord. Mm. Mm. The love of God will lead you to the fear of the Lord. And all it is is, man, God, I just want to obey you lovingly. It's not a task to obey you. It's a, it, it's a gift to obey you. Mm -hmm. And so your, your lavish love, right, of the Lord will, call you, will cause you to obey him with love. And I, I, I really, really believe that people that are watching today are going to get a 
fresh infilling of the love of God. Yeah, yeah. A fresh infilling. I mean, I even said it before. I know that this is, some of you have a divine appointment or have had a divine appointment with death. And now you have a divine appointment with the love of God. Come on. Ooh, so yeah, good. Yeah. I, I truly believe that. that. Yeah. 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 I think we so Lord, so that. Lord, we just, yeah. we just come before you right now. And on the other side of this lens, on the other side of this lens, the love of God has been chasing you down. The love of God has been chasing you down and you feel that your heart is beating fast right now. You know that God has been calling your name in the midst of darkness, in the midst of death, in the midst of trauma, in the midst of pain. And God is saying, come, my child, come, my child. I am calling you and your appointment is with the love of God. Yes. Your yes. appointment is with the true living everlasting God who knew your beginning, who knows your beginning and even knows your end. Mm. And so even right now, I speak life through the word of God and I speak the love of God over your life mm. right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. With those sitting in their cars right yeah. now, experience Jesus. the love of God. Yes, Lord. Yes. With those sitting in their bedrooms right now, yes. experience the love of God. Mm. With those sitting at work right now, have a fresh encounter with the love yes. of God. And I stand in proxy to those mm. young women that whose father never has told them that they, they actually loved. I stand in proxy as a brother as a brother, and I say, hey, the love of God will shed abroad in your heart mm. right now in the name of Jesus. A fresh infilling of the love of God where a father, where a mother has not valued or affirmed you or loved you. I am welcoming the father's love right now into your living room yes. right now in the name of Jesus. Into your car in the name of Jesus. Yes. At your on, workplace Jesus. in the name of Jesus. At your school in the name of oh, Jesus. You may be riding a school bus right now. and You're looking at this YouTube video. Wow. Lord, I pray that you would encounter them right now Thank you, Lord. in the name of Thank Jesus you, with the love of God. That's where it begins. I pray right now for anyone who's watching this video and feels fear and intimidation mm. coming over them and coming against them. And even a spirit that's speaking to your mm. mind and trying to get you to think that you need to commit suicide in order to just get free of everything that you're facing. That is not the answer. Mm. And Lord, I break this fear and intimidation off this person right now in the name of Jesus. You, you have Lord, to go yes. right now in yes. Jesus' name. And I thank you for the person on the other side of this camera who's getting delivered, who's getting set free, that the love of Jesus is coming through and touching their heart right now and freeing them and actually delivering them of any suicidal thought. Any mm -hmm. thoughts of depression or anxiety right yeah. now? You have to go right yeah. now in Jesus, in name. Jesus name. No intimidation, Jesus. no fear. Thank you, I thank you, God, that they have everything they need in Christ to be free. And that the enemy would no longer speak to their mind and try to tell them that they don't have anything. They don't have what they need to be free. They have everything they need in Christ to be free. And I thank you, Jesus, for freedom and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Father, we just thank you. In Jesus' name, God, that you're reaching your people right now. And those watching, and you feel this fire. You feel this fire in your belly, in your body. And, and, and you that's the Holy Spirit encountering you right now. That's the Holy Spirit just uh, giving you assurance yeah. that you are a child of God. And even the one that's watching who wants to say yes to God, this is your moment. This is your yeah. night yeah. right now. May the love of God overwhelm you tonight. I come into agreement with everything my friend said today. And we lift our faith to you, Jesus. And we just declare, God, that, that sons and daughters will come home that has gone astray and, mm -hmm. into these lifestyles. And have God just got uh, allowed the enemy, God, to trip them up and fell for his his traps lord we we call you back in jesus name yes. back home we say come to your senses yes. in the mighty name of jesus you are who god says you are a daughter and a son of the most high god and i thank you jesus oh i thank you that you have not given them a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and we just speak life over you watching today friend and we say may the love of jesus oh may the love of god strike your heart today wow. in jesus name yeah, you know, just because I have a thought 
that my hand is red doesn't mean my hand is red. I feel like there's some people watching that the enemy's been giving you thoughts and he's been telling you these lies and he, he's been sending condemnation to you and, and you have believed it. You have believed it as identity, but God wants to speak identity over you. God wants to speak truth over you. As you're going to begin to pursue God, as you dig into the scriptures, he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to reveal true identity to you, yeah. not the lie of the enemy and the, the thoughts that he's sending you. So we break those thoughts right now. Yes. We expose those thoughts right now. Holy Spirit, I pray you visit every single person watching this, wherever they're at. You expose those lies with truth in Jesus' mighty name right now. Right now, we break the cycles. We break the lies. We break the, everything that we've already agreed with, anxiety, depression, fear, yes, suicide, yes, lust, yes, yes, all yes. the turmoil. It finishes and it stops today yes, in yes, Jesus' yes, mighty yes, name. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, we thank you yep. for the, the power of the Holy Spirit that breaks yep. every yoke. Yep. The anointing that heals the brokenhearted. Yep. The anointing that sets the captives free. We yep. call it forth Hallelujah. right where you're at in Jesus' name. Mm. I also feel right now there's some people here and you've been believing these lies and you feel your identity is not Christ. And right now you're watching this and you want to say, you know what? I, I, I've been away from God. I found my identity in other things. And today I want to give my life to Jesus. Yep. I want him yep. to become my rock. I I want him to become my identity. I want the truth and not the lies. And if you're watching this, the Bible says confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus died and he rose again and you shall be saved. My friend, tomorrow is not promised. The Bible doesn't say tomorrow is a day of salvation. It says now, now is the day of salvation and Jesus is knocking at your heart. And if you would just open it, let him in, all the lies would be exposed. All those things that you think are truth will, will be visible that they they are lies. Listen, pray this prayer with me. Will you allow him in? Whether you've been with him and you've lost him or whether you've never given your life to him and today you want to give your life to Jesus and say, you know what? I, I want the truth. I don't want lies. Pray this prayer with me real quick. Yeah, yeah. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again from my sins. I ask you to wash me of my sins. I ask you to wash me of those lies the enemy has sent me. I ask you to come into my heart and build truth in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Come on. The Bible says when one sinner repents, when one person repents and gives his life or her life to Jesus, all of heaven rejoices. Yes. There is a rejoicing oh, in heaven right now. Yeah. Listen, some of you are already feeling like there was a weight. There was a heaviness. There was, there was a heat on some of you. But you know what? Some of you are feeling the lightness right now. That is the anointing. That is the power of the Holy yes. Spirit. Listen, this Freedom. is your time. This is a new time, a new season for you in Jesus' name. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, my goodness, Thank you, Brother Mark. Yes. Oh, my goodness, for leading us into that. Wow, uh, wow. Golly. I, guys, I'm about to, we're about to have church in this living room. <laughs> I can't. We've been having church been having, since, the, since the fam has been here. It's oh been pretty gosh, wild, but you, you got to, you know what? For the person that just gave their life to Jesus, yeah. you got you got to have this. Yeah, yeah. find yeah. a local yeah. church. Yeah. If you got to so press good. Google, local churches in my area, I, whatever it looks like. But yeah. you need to find community to stay free. Get around yeah. people that are on fire for That's Jesus. That That's when it. you feel tempted and when you feel like, man, like I just feel these lies again. But I gave my life to Jesus. Listen, mm. it's going to happen. That's it. The enemy is going to come after <laughs> you, wow. probably even more now because you just gave your life to wow, Jesus because now you're a threat. Wow, you're no wow. longer in bondage, so you're a threat to the enemy. Wow. And so don't be surprised that the enemy might try and come after you even That's more, so but good. don't feel condemnation. That might actually be the mark that you're a son and a daughter, that the enemy is coming after you even more than when you were a son or a daughter of the devil. And so I'm telling you right now, you got to find people that are on fire for Jesus that can hold your arms up, that can say, hey, you're not that person anymore. That is not who you are, and I love you too much to see you try and stumble back when the enemy tries to detour you and distract you. And so I just want to encourage the person that just gave their life to Jesus after Mark just prayed that guard, guard your salvation, guard it with fear and trembling and find people around you that can, that can stoke the flame and the fire of God in your life and that believe in the purpose in which he's called you. So, yeah, that's that's so good. And as you guys are watching, just want to honor 
like all my friends in the <laughs> yes. room, all my kingdom family. And <laughs> if you talk about stoking the fire, if you guys actually will drop all their information in the description below in our in our channel. But just want to just enter. Yeah, and introduce I guess, you guys please. and the, these, these fiery women of God, these mogs, please. these wogs. <laughs> Who are you guys? <laughs> Reveal thyself. Yes. 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 Speaking of identity, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so my name is Hannah Williamson, and I love y'all so much. Like Kingdom oh, we Fam, love you. we honor you. But yeah, so I am a YouTuber. I travel and speak. Um, I'm a daughter of Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, uh, me and my family recently moved from Ohio to North Carolina, and we're loving it here. It's attending the Ark Fellowship Church. So fire times, fire stuff. You so. travel, you preach, like, you know. Social media, <laughs> all the all the things. All the random things. So, yeah. Hi, I'm a child of God. Come on. Let's uh, go. That's right. <laughs> Come on, Mark. My name is Matt Cruz. Um, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I'm an evangelist. And, um, that's where I reside. And I am in full-time ministry. And I love pointing people to Jesus. So Come on. Yeah. My name is Mark Morozov. I'm from Florida. I love Jesus too. I would agree with everything these guys said, except the daughter part. I'm not a daughter, but I'm a son. I know my identity. Come on, somebody. You're not confused. Praise I'm God. Not confused. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lamb. Yeah, thank God you're not confused. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I get to travel the world, preach the gospel, see people saved, touched, experience Jesus. We're after revival uh, in the world, in the nations, and uh, we're seeing it. What a time to be alive. Come on, amen. Yes. Would you agree Absolutely. with me? Yeah. I love I love being alive at this generation, at this time, seeing all God's doing. And uh, I believe God's inviting some of you guys to, to do the same thing. Yeah, so we just want to encourage you guys. Go follow them. Find them on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube. Um, they have so much value and their their voices in this generation. And so we honor you guys. Like, thank you so much for being here. We're, we're extremely honored. So thank you guys so yeah. much. And you guys know that this channel exists to empower all of you guys in all walks of faith to overcome apathy and casual living by providing biblical truth and purposeful wisdom for a transformed life. And so we love you guys. Until next time, peace. peace.